Main Lord Kia Jose Guapo, aka Nacho, giving a major double salute to Hood and Men to the skip. Shopper like he blind, he tryna hit everybody. I get high and D on yo, bitch, I'm tryna fuck everybody. So lean to the floor, I'm fresh and hit. Alright, so Shay, let them know where we at right now. Um, For those who don't know you, if they don't. We in Zone 3 Atlanta, Pittsburgh, community to be exact. Is it 244 University Avenue? Yeah. Okay. Sam Street. Right now we on Sam Street. This is the street I was brought up on, raised on. My grandma stayed in three different houses. This is my uncle's house I'm at right now. Shit, they down there been here all my life. Yeah. We're in Pittsburgh right now. Yeah. So shit, how would you describe that as far as growing up here and whatnot? Was it rough, easy? Uh, yeah, it was rough. It was rough because um, this we my grandma stayed over here, so all my brothers and sisters, this is where we like used to come for spring break, um, weekend, shit like that. We come to our grandma house because we want to be with our brothers and sisters, but it's eleven of us. Yeah. So shit. Yeah, yeah, it was rough. Then my daddy was locked up for my daddy did like 10, 11 years for a murder and up getting out because they finessed it to a manslaughter. But he was out of our lives for 11 years, 10, 11 years. So yeah, yeah, we had, I had a single parent struggle. You know what I'm saying? My uncles and my uncles and shit was always like getting money and shit like that, but they weren't big time yet. But they were getting money and shit like that. So my uncles and shit were making sure. I, would, I stayed, but like my uncle and my mom made sure I had what I needed. I might kind of always get what I wanted, but I had what I needed. And then for real, for real, by the time I turned 11, I started getting my own money. I started getting my own money at the age of 11, like some shit that can hold some weight when you 11. Like I was getting, I was having like a hundred or two on me at the age of 11 of my own money. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, would you say at that um at that age then that you already knew what was going on, like you was aware of everything that was happening, how you was getting your money and shit like that? Yeah, I read my daddy discovery pack when I was ten years old. Mm -hmm. So it like and I and I had like phone calls when I'm in this in this same house right here. Yeah. Like, this house right here? Yeah. This the house I read discovery pack in and this the house I have phone conversations with him. So it like I knew I was always ahead of my time. Like, I was uh, just one of them kids that could pick up on shit. Like, if I see it once, or you show me once, I pay attention to our memory. So I pick out picking up on shit. So I just always knew I wanted more. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, my uncles, like, as I started getting older and older, older like, 10, them, they getting money now. Yeah. So it's like, I'm seeing flamboyant shit. Yeah. I'm in the hood. You gotta know the dope dealers in the hood. So I'm seeing nice cars. I'm learning what the difference is from a, a ugly pair of shoes to a five pair of shoes. I'm learning what the nice clothes is, and I wanted that shit. So shit, I jumped out of the port and went for what I know. Yeah. All right. So then, for you, then, when did the music come into play? Then was that something that was on your mind at the time? No, I ain't even lie. I never, I never, I never was on no rap shit. I was on some get money, stay fly, having my way type shit, and that the lifestyle of a rapper, but I never grew up. I, it ain't like I, when I was little, I would tell people, oh, I want to be a rapper when I grow up. I want to be a rapper when I grow up. That never was my dream, but I always knew I was going to be my own boss. I ain't going to lie. Like, I always, I always knew I was going to be my own boss. In high school, like, middle school and high school, like, when they used to be saying, what you going to be when you be older, what you keep when you get older, like, I, I, ain't, I, I, I ain't never was saying, like, astronaut or a rapper yeah. or no shit like that. Like, I ain't have it figured out in middle school, but I was getting money in middle school. Like, I was, like, we, we were doing some shit we called a paper. It's called a paper in Atlanta. Like, it's similar to the shit, like, what the water boys got going on yeah. now. But we had a paper, typed up paper, saying we play for such and such football team and we raising donations. Mm. So I was doing that. So basically, what, hold yep. on, yep. what was that? I would say y'all was scamming then, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we were scamming the rich, <laughs> but the hood rich, we were telling them what's going on. Like, we yeah. let them know, hey man, we ain't really on no football team. We got them <laughs> yeah. um, just out here trying to get us some money and we don't want to be selling dope. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. We were too young, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I had, and I had little brothers to look over, so I ain't want them going down the wrong path. So it was my idea, like, I got with some of my homies from, from Four Seasons, Tomville, and Jumbo South. 
and they put me on to the paper shit, but I started typing up our own papers. And I told my little brother, I'm like, this is what we gonna be doing. We ain't gonna be the young nigga that's standing in front of the store with a little uh, $100 bomb. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Nah, we gonna be the nigga. We was the niggas. We was the nigga that get on the model bus in the morning, early in the morning, shoot out there the Alpharetta or somewhere, Santa Spring, down with it where the rich at, do the paper, make a hundred, one fifty, and we come back and we gamble. We gambled those niggas that was on the block. That's what we did. We gambled the niggas that were on the block. The nigga that was selling drugs. The nigga that was pulling up in these nice cars. Cause it was a handful of us. So even if I just had two hundred or something on me, it's probably like five, six, seven of us with two hundred or at least a hundred. So they, they looking yeah. at us like we sweet. So that's how a nigga really made a name for itself too, hood for hood. Showing dice with the older niggas in the hood, cause it was already started had getting a little money. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that major, but it was so major for our age. Yeah, that part, that part. All right, would you say like everything around you in the sense though, did they want it, did they kinda have like you thinking like, okay, this I'm might be. I'm a product of my environment. Yeah, basically, yeah. I'm a product of my environment. Mm. I just ain't I just ain't gonna like I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna let the system fail me. You know how everybody fit, fall yeah. to the system? Yeah. I ain't gonna fall to the system. That was my always my mother, like, don't fall to the system. So I'm a product of my environment, right, environment but I ain't gonna fall to the system. Yeah. Is that what um, kept you in the sense from not like being in front of the corners, like you said, as far as like, with the doubles, as far as in the corner, I mean, in front of the um, corner store selling or whatever? <coughs> See, I ain't gonna corner. lie. Family tried to keep us out the street as much as possible. Yeah. So <coughs> it wasn't like I could just even it wasn't even like we could just be on the corner selling weed. Mm -hmm. Cause then my uncle pull up, like he snatching me up. Like then get your ass all the get your yeah. ass all they come. Like that's what he was hustling for. So we didn't have to be on the corner, so we didn't have to follow in their footsteps. But shit, it just sometimes the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Yeah. yeah. So how was like the um? How did people even react? You know, like when you even started to come up on the music part, then when you even started to introduce them to it, that you was doing it. I was always popular and popping. Like in high school, I won best dress. Middle school, I won best dress. Most popular shit like that. I always was popular. I always was, was a nigga that niggas fuck with. I got good energy. I've been having good energy. When I come around, I lift niggas up. Like I don't want nobody to be in bad spirit or no shit like that. So. Like even if you're a nerd or a lame, like and we we was in the same class or something, like I'll I make sure that I said something to you to make you feel good about yourself. You know what I'm saying? So niggas always wanted me around and I just always was a nigga that was had game. Like I told you, I, I ain't really I got raised by the streets. The streets raised a nigga. Like my mama raised me, but when I said as far as like knowledge and how to carry myself and demeanor and shit like Street rules, streets raising it because my family were trying to keep a nigga out the streets. Like all my uncles and shit that was in the streets and shit. Like my daddy was in jail, so they, yeah. they down one nigga to follow the footsteps, so they trying to keep us away from the shit. But it's like, shit, hell yeah, nah, a nigga knew about the shit because she had seen it. Yeah. And shit, I just, I felt, I fit, I fitted the description of a rapper. Yeah. Like, I, I came out when you really had to be who you was. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I came out when, if you get on the song saying you this and that, the people that know you, they gonna know you lying if that ain't what you is. So I came out, my generation was the time where I came out and the people knew I was what I was saying I was. So shit, I fit the destruction of a rapper and I went with it. Yeah, yeah. You said fuck. Alright, but not to jump around though, even when what you say and been raised by the streets and still um, been exposed to it, would you say like that um kinda of traumatized you in a sense like Hell yeah. Yeah yeah well, growing up in the streets you're gonna see some shit you ain't got no business seeing if your ass would have been in the house or a backyard with a trampoline or a backyard with a little mini lake, you know what I'm saying? You gonna see some shit whether you want to or not. Like it's just whether you want to or not, nigga. Some shit can go down right now cause we're in the hood. Like you can see some you yeah. like some shit can go down and like these folk can come out cussing about their house and their yard or something and these folk get to him, blah, come out shooting their bow. You gonna see some shit when you're in the streets whether you want to or not. And it's on you what you take from that. 
some people see shit and follow the shit they see, mm -hmm. and some people see shit and stay away from the shit they see. Right. So I'm a victim of seeing shit and following it. And I'm a victim of seeing shit and staying away from it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. All right. So even when um you started doing the music, like, when did you even link up with Rich Kids and like y'all started? I linked up with them at a game. See, we got a football stadium in Atlanta called um, Lakewood Stadium, mm -hmm. and that's where all the high school and shit mm -hmm. play football at. Yeah. But that stadium is in Zone Three. It's in my hood. Yeah. So it's like I'm going to every game, whether it's my school or not. I'm going to every game because I'm dead fresh. I'm going to the game just because it's in our hood. We going. I don't give a fuck about school playing or not. So I went to a dub versus Washington game. Like they they was the biggest rivals when it came to sports for the West Side. So I already knew how lit that motherfucker was gonna be. I went to a dub versus Washington game and that's when I met the rich kid. I had already knew Baby Charles from Shun Dice and shit with him and Forward. And he would he would hang with them and he introduced me to them and shit. It went for enough. We locked in and it went for enough. We all were just like some turned up individuals that in our own way at our school. Yeah, yeah. All right, so even, um, all right, fast forward and then, did you even expect that y'all even do what y'all did, even with you? I ain't know nothing, bro. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. Only thing I knew was, only thing I knew was that Rashad is T.I. cousin, and shit, we ain't got to make something that sound like something. Yeah. And that's better than goddamn just, shit, just being in the studio on your own, because you in a group with somebody. This back when, now, this back when being a rapper was unheard of. Like as a now and the shit that I don't came and did, I it's like it ain't rappers ain't looked at the same. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? Like the chases it chasing you in the mall and the you the only nigga with a chain, so the people are amazed by your chain. Nah, you know, everybody, indeed they Uber drivers might have a, a chain. Yeah. So it like, rappers ain't idolized how they used to be back then. But back then, niggas is idolized. Right now, niggas say, oh, thug my cousin, or oh, um, shoot you my cousin, and won't nobody care. Niggas be like, yeah, you lying, you capping. Yeah. Lying. But now, nah, or even if, even if you ain't capping, nobody still ain't gonna care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, okay, you might yeah, be. Yeah, you ain't T.I. or whatever, yeah. Nah, but you might be their cousin. You yeah. them, know. So. Yeah. So I say that to say, nigga, I would rather try my chances with, hey, I'm hanging out with somebody that's T.I. Because if I'm be rapping, I want to hang with Buddy. Yeah. Not no, not, not no lame shit like that, Shark. I know you might see that. But I'm, that would I, that's what I put in my head. We can, I told my little brother, like, straight up, I'm like, because. We were, they were finna start rapping. That's Y3, that's B Shot and Hendrix. I was already with that, I came up with Y3. So it's like, but when I figured out that this T.I. Cousin, I'm like, shit. I put my, uh, my own gang on pause, and I made a chess move for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I told niggas like, bro, this T.I. Cousin, bro, long, this something, I don't give a fuck, nigga, like, we gonna make something that sound like something. T.I. hear it, we straight. That was my mindset. <laughs> yeah, no. Nigga couldn't, hey. nigga couldn't, nigga couldn't tell me different. Yeah, working your move. So, make a long story short. We <laughs> fuck around and made something that was something. And T.I. heard it. I can't make this <laughs> up. Like, I swear to God, I can't make this up. Like, we didn't send it, we ain't even send that song like on some, hey, can y'all tell T.I. to listen to this? None of that. I'm talking about my partner now. Yeah. Like, we ain't send that to T.I. or we ain't get that. Them folk came to us. This T.I. cousin already on the song, so everybody that, that worked for Grand Hustle and shit, they already know him. So once they seen the shit, cause the shit went viral, before viral was a thing, it went viral on Facebook. They seen the shit on Facebook overnight. Like, overnight, my partner went viral overnight. The next day we woke up from last night, it was viral. People calling us, telling us to take it down because we was 16 and 15 smoking weed in the video. And that's when we knew we had some. And that's when got down, Grand Hustle T.I. them started, hey, what y'all got going on? You know what I'm saying? We start, we got management, we got Grand Hustle management from KT, which is one of T.I. best friends, Kern. That's how the rich kids shit. That's the whole story of 
how the rich kids came about. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how they met before me. I don't yeah. know all that. So even for you then, what what um, went into thought when you made that that split then when you went solo? Shit. For real, for real, it was just some shit like. I wasn't selling. I want. I wasn't sell no weed. I wasn't sell no weed and let no nigga be in control of how much weed I sell or what I charge for my weed, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the street way I'm gonna put it, right? And the music way, the industry way I'm gonna put it is like basically we all was under 18, so none of us could sign paperwork. So all our parents gotta sign our paperwork. It's five members in the group. Each, that make 10 parents. So that's 10 opinions, egos, and yeah. reasons of what they think about their son. And woo, woo, woo. No disrespect, nobody parent. No disrespect, nobody parent, because I still fuck with everybody to the day. But it was like, basically, shit. School bus dad ain't want to sign the papers. He want to sign. That nigga said straight up. He know it. He said straight up. Hey man, he believe he, that nigga believed in his son way back then. I can't count. I gotta get that to him. He believed in his son way back then. Like he he was talking on some shit. Basically, like he know what he got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for real, for real. And shit. Make long story short, he didn't sign the papers. A nigga did not sign the paper, so that got us held. That got us held up. Like, cause like we ain't on all the papers to get signed. You know, don't nobody want to, back, especially back then, don't nobody want to do no business until the papers get signed. So shit, the papers ain't get signed. And we just sitting around doing shows, but the records are dying down. You know what I'm saying? So I, they called me. They they called me. KT and Dro called me like. We pull up to the studio. I pull up to the studio. They pull me in the room. They're like, man, we think you can do it solo, man. You got it, man. Shit, we behind you. You got it. You can do it solo. And I was, I was already on the shit. Like I can't let another man or nobody control my money or how I get my money. You know what I'm saying? Cause that shit stopped money. So I just left the group on the shit. Like they had already told me I can do it solo. I always had the I'm that nigga type of demeanor. So, and I went from letting nobody hold, block my money. I, like, money was very important to me. So, shit, I just left. Like, I called them, we had a show in Washington, D.C. I called them and told them they can keep my, my front end. Cause they were trying to get my front end. I was like, y'all, y'all bust it down just y'all, man. I'm finna go on and on. And later on that night, on V103, I announced that I was, I was solo and my name Jose Guapo. And the city went up in a frenzy. Like, that shit was crazy. I remember, mean, like, every yesterday, like, everybody would call my phone. Mm. Yeah, like, did you expect, like, did you expect people to have, like, that sort of reaction from you splitting from the group like that? I, I was who I was before the group. Yeah. I told you, like, I was who I was yeah, before so the group. It, like, yeah. It ain't a bitch. And I don't care what school district she, she in, unless it's Catholic, that didn't know who the June was. So I was already a, a hood star before the group. Yeah. So when I so when I left the group, I'm just like shit. I can do this shit. Like I'm, I was always a nigga that didn't never cared what people thought either. So it was like I'm doing this shit. I want to do this shit. Like I we don't, I done been a rapper. Mm -hmm. We done been doing shows. I'm, I done felt like I show money feel. I done felt like I feel the. For girls to fuck you just because you famous, yeah. I done felt, hey man, I done experienced some shit. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I, I ain't wanna go back to the streets. Yeah. So I'm mm, solo, Jose Guapo. I wanna, st I wanna continue doing this. I like this. Mm, yeah. What well, um, what inspired the um the name change? Like, how'd you come with that name? From watching like a lot of uh, dope movies and shit like that. You know all the you know all the you know all the kingpins and landlords and all that, they got a first and a last name. You know what I'm saying? Like Pablo Escobar, mm -hmm. Frank Lucas, Frank Matthew, Hugh Kirkland. You know what I'm saying? 
Baby Face Nails, John Dillinger. John Goddard, buddy. John Goddard. Yeah. They got a first and then even stars when they when they when they when when people say a star name, they don't be like, yeah, Lawrence. We we got Lawrence. They don't like Lauren Fishburne. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. First last name. Yeah. And I ain't wanna have no love or no young connected to me. I ain't wanna have no love or no young connected to me. So she, I went with that. Hey, answer that. That hand. Dang. Dang. I went with that. I went with Jose. My first day was calling me Jose. You, it's either, it's either um, what I did with it, bro. It's even on the um 24 hours mistake. That's right. It's even on 24 hours of this day, I was calling myself Jose. So she, I went to Guapo because I wanted to have a first and a, first and a last name. And I knew people were going to want to know, like, why you got, why you name yourself Jose Guapo? Is you, is you Spanish? You Mexican? It was a conversation starter. So it basically was a smart ass marketing yeah, move. Yeah, real. Oh, real. Marketing move, like if somebody hear it, if somebody hear it, they ain't going to thank, uh, they ain't going to thank me. They ain't going to thank nobody black. Mm -hmm. So and then plus I did it to grab the Latino community, cause I know they know that name and Guapo actually means handsome in, in Spanish. So every time a, a bitch say my name, she saying Jose is handsome. Yeah. Like Jose, yeah. Jose Guapo. She saying Jose, Jose is handsome. So that's that's where they come about. For real. All right, speaking on that, anyway, like, um, what you doing on Rich Kids, going solo and things of nature, and, like, basically you still a lot of trees. I had to go back to the trap, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. That shit ain't just popped for me overnight when I went solo. It got, it got, it got, it got kind of, it got kind of slow because I didn't carry on with Rich Kid Jr. as my name. Mm. So it's like I'm a whole new Another, person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's people still to this day that be like, damn, bro, I ain't know that was you. Like real for shit. For real, for real. Like my bros and shit know like it's people that find out I was in Rich Kid and still be like, damn, I ain't know that was you. Cause I didn't carry on with the same name. Mm -hmm. So that shit kinda got a little statically for me. It wasn't like I was able to catch no shows and then like using that brand and yeah. that thing. You know what I'm saying? So it got a little static for me and I ain't gonna lie, shit. I ended up back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how how long did it take for it to actually pop then for you? Uh, to actually, when it, it started going, it's, I got it going when I dropped Bussy. See, Bussy, that's, we got a little hood club named Crucial mm. in Atlanta, Club Crucial on the west side. Bussy is a certain type of way the girls shake their ass at Club Crucial. They, they, they dance got created at Club Crucial. It's a certain type of way that they shake their ass. It ain't just shaking your ass like Bussy, like my song Bussy. It ain't just shaking your ass. Nah, it's a, it's a certain type of way. I refuse to do it. But it's like everybody from the A that they gonna know what I'm talking certain type of way they shut their ass. I drop bust it. I ain't gonna lie. The, the hoes and shit start fucking with me, so I'm just fucking with it. And they already know like I was in the rich kids, so I'm still good with that as far as when it comes to the women and shit. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't good with it with the my shows and shit, so I'm getting in the groove I'll bust it. Dro dro jump on bust it. Dro jump on bust it. Boom. So I Boom. I'm, I'm doing, I'm going, I ain't having no show, but I'm on the road with Dro. Young Dro, I'm yeah. going to his show, he let me perform and shit. So it's, it's moving, it's moving. So then, it's like, I felt like I wasn't really getting no, I felt like when the same people that called me on the phone and told me to go solo, I felt like they weren't around for me, like, for real, for real. Like I needed them to. I like I, I was crying out for help at the time, and they, and they ain't ride for me like I needed them to. So I just I dropped my nuts and I just left that situation alone. I left that situation alone. And I just started uh, got down roaming. What has been right now? Like you said, like um back in um zone three, like where you uh, came up at, in a sense like that. What keep you coming back? Because a lot of people are saying like you gotta, you can't come back to where you started at in a sense. You make it out. I mean, you, you make it out, stay out, but shit, visit. Especially when you still got uncles and shit that live over there. Yeah. Visit. And know what time to visit. Know when to visit. Have your ear to the streets that you know if your hood got some beef or something. You know what I'm saying? You know what's going on. You know what you're doing when, when you is coming to the hood. Yeah. Like, I don't come to the hood to prove no point. Like, all my yeah. videos, I shoot them in the hood because I want to show my hood to the world. 
Yeah. Um, I ain't on no, no I can. I can go back to my hood, my jerk room. Yeah, I can, but like we we gotta stop doing that too. We gotta stop making that. Like it gotta be something to do. Like nah, man. I can come to the hood because the hood love me. And I, I fuck with the hood. Yeah. Like, that's, that's just what I can say. Yeah. Do you feel like you um lasted so long in a sense too, just because, like I said, you don't give a fuck in a sense? Well, yeah. 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 I got a new song out right now called I Don't Give a Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't give a fuck, bro. You can't give a fuck because these folks will tell you down, man. These folks make you feel so small. You know you got a hundred thousand in cash on you right now, but if you let these folk comment, man, these folk will tell you down, man. Hey, yeah. I, even for you too, like, like you said, you you independent. Looking at the whole aspect of that, would you say like that was um a good decision for you, seeing how it's always something going on? I'm just happy that I'm free. Like, it's like. Mm -hmm. You gotta be free. Like I, like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I'm not moving man, at the pace that I want to move right now because there is no machine, and I'm not blaming nobody or making no excuses. But it's like I'm, I'm at least happy that I have the choices to make on my own. I have my freedom as an artist. Yeah. Deals and all that label and shit. That shit gonna come. Like I ain't tripping. Like yeah. I can walk in any label right now and get a deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. They might, they might, they definitely not gonna give me what I want. But I can walk in any label right now and get a deal. So like. It ain't about that. I'm happy to be free as an artist when I wake up tomorrow. Hey man, I want to put this motherfucking straining freestyle out. And I can put it out, call him, <laughs> and say, Brody, yeah. 3 o'clock. Not no, call him and call the label and see can I drop, drop this song at 3 o'clock, bro. Yeah. I ain't answering for me. Or even, <laughs> or even playing, because when you play music, that I ain't <laughs> answering for me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't gonna never be in no point like that anyway, because whatever, whatever label I do sign to, we, we gonna be breaking bread, so I'm gonna have leverage in my deal. All right, yeah. So she, even right now too, with you um, when it comes to like the new music and all that you're trying to put out, because I know you, when you playing like the new music yesterday on your live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you top then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's even the I am that. who I made me, man. Yeah. See, that's the thing too. I am who I made me. It's like I'm taking responsible. I'm, I'm, I'm taking account of my responsibilities of everything from when I started, started as a rapper, up to this day. If I was too high and I fucked some shit up or ooh, 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 whatever, I'm the blame. I'm not blaming no other man for shit. I did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I'm saying I am who I made. Because it's like, whether it was an up or a down, I'm not saying it was nobody else's fault but mine, man. Hey, man, face the, face the horse in the mirror, man. That shit coming from the mouth of the horse. Right, I'm letting you know, like, I am who I made me. Whether, whatever you think of me, I am who made that. If you might think me as, oh, he ain't, mm, all right, cool. Somebody else might praise me like God, which I know you don't supposed to do, but you know what I'm saying? So, somebody else might be like, he'll fly like young nigga. Somebody else might be like, he, he, he a rapper, he, 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 I like I ain't rap. Yeah. I am whatever your opinion is about me. I made that, it was something I did, whether it was good or bad. So that's the whole thing, what I am, who I made me. I'm trying to let these folks know I ain't blaming no, I ain't blaming no label, I ain't blaming no rapper, I ain't blaming no managers. I ain't blaming no homies, I ain't blaming no hoes, I ain't blaming nobody. Mm. I'm taking accountability. Damn. And I think they gonna respect it. For real, for real. Do you think um, if social media was like it was back then, like it would have been helped your career? Yeah. Or it wasn't? Hell yeah, yeah, I would have went. Look how much I go viral right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know how fucking viral, viral I'll be going crazy, man. Yeah. Down there going viral every day, man. <laughs> I'm talking about every day, man. You know how uncensored I used to be? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do you think that would have like hindered it a little bit too though? Because everything kind of getting recorded. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pool parties and house parties and man. I need a tip. <laughs> man, I would have been put my Instagram probably would have got the media, man. Cause I was young and I had that mind state. That my granddaddy. 
I was young and I didn't have the mind state that, that I needed to have. I know I didn't. Yeah. Man, I would have been. Yeah. I would have been going viral every day. Yeah.